Has he ever faced anybody who hit hard as me? No. Has he ever faced somebody bigger than me? No. He ain't faced nobody with the head movement, the footwork, or any of that shit that I got. I beat Palomino ass, man. You ain't taking my belt, though, sorry. I'm head hunting. I want to knock somebody out. You got a good reach, a good right hand, that about it. And you know, my family was was pacifist, you know, Mississippi, the Bible Belt. So I always had a fascination with fighting. And you know, uh, it, it wasn't, you know, it was frowned upon, you know, amongst a righteous community. But at the same time, you know, we had people that was big in the street fighting and we had people that, w that were interested in martial arts. We just didn't have the facilities. So as soon as I turned 18 and I had my own job, I was able to, to join a, a mixed martial arts gym. I ain't always have to worry about trying to sneak and get training in with my uncles and cousins and stuff. I was on it. And then turned out, man, I was, I was a, a decent ass kicker. <laughs> And one thing led to the next, one title after the next, one country after the next, and one promotion after the next, one sport after the next, and now we in BKFC, still whooping people ass. You know, honestly, uh, this space that we're in now, uh, it was never meant to be a gym. Uh, so that Martin could have freedom of training. Uh, he wanted to acquire a small space uh, that he can come in any time of the night, any time of the day and have availability. And in doing that, uh, started training and a lot of guys started following us over here. I mean, he's long been one of the top guys uh, in the area. Uh, so people go where the talent is and uh, that's how it became a gym, but it was never meant to be a gym. Jihad had owned the gym before I did. He told me had it not been for, for boxing, he'd have never left the hood. And had it not been uh, for this gym, you know, I didn't have any money. I was sleeping in the cars and stuff. From sleeping in the cars to sleeping in the gym to sleeping on the couch. So had it not been for the gym, I would never be able to make the income I make now. Fighting gave me the opportunity that I would like to give other people. So I said, well, if this the worst community that Tampa had, let's drop it there. Let's give everybody else that, that opportunity. So I definitely, I definitely wanted that presence in the, in the community. And hopefully, you know, uh, give more people the same shot that I had. I mean, we don't turn people down. Like, if they don't have the funds to pay for it, how are we going to kick somebody out of the gym just because their, their only downfall was their, their financial situation? So, nah, man, we don't do that. I don't know. I just think... I think the best come from adversity. We, we condition by the environment that we in. You know, they say you wanna, uh, you always wanna leave a place better than it was before you got there. And hopefully that's what Shift MMA does. I get him back. I just gotta get my, my air back now. So today I'll start with three rounds, you know? Ah, okay, so the historical world's famous fish street gym was where Angelo Dundee used to train Muhammad Ali. That was Muhammad Ali's gym. And it's, it's the gym where you can go any day to, to South Beach, to the fish street gym, and you'll find a guy that's 20 something and old. 30 and know, you know, like you'll find world champions because everybody gravit like, they gravitate towards that gym. One of the beauties about it is like, you don't know who shows up. There's always somebody, you know, a professional, you know, either vacationing or just happens to be in the middle of their camp and they come here to look for sparring too. So there's always going to be sparring bodies over here. Like, and the, the beauty about it is that you don't know who it is. Like, you get the best work because it's kind of like a fight if you think about it. You know, you don't know the person's habits, the do's and don'ts, you don't know. 
So you got to get to know them in there and adapt to the situation as you go. There's nothing better than sparring with somebody you don't know. There's nothing better than that. Nothing tops that. And yes, Gustavo trains with Eric Castanhas too, as well as with me here in uh, Young Tigers Foundation. But we go and get our sparring over there with Coach Dino. You know, Coach Tigre and Coach Dino work well together. And, you know, we help each other, you know. And now we have Chris Sorrow and we have uh, little blonde Jay, man. You got to see that girl spar. Savage, man. Savage. She puts it down. <laughs> You know, so it's very good when you have successful people in the bare, in the bare knuckle game that are training around you, so you can pick up on the things that, for example, I got my things that I picked up on, and they'll pick up from those, and I'll pick up from the little things that work for them. So we pick from each other, you know, so yeah, it is very important to have, a, uh, and, and very good thing to have more than two or three different bare knuckle fighters in the same gym. Because, you know, just like any other group, like any other gym, you pick things up from each other. Here at the Fifth Street Gym, we have an unbelievable culture. People from all over the world come out. Today we got a couple of Italians, a couple of Cubans. We got everybody from all over the world, and most importantly, Baboon Palomino, uh, the best bare knuckle fighter in the world. And the reason, our secret, our secret sauce is he spawned with guys with 10 times the experience his opponents. 10 times. The guy today had 90 amateur fights, plus his professional career. It's unlimited experience, and Baboon is such a smart fighter. He takes little things, pieces here and there. He's a thief in the night. He takes techniques from each one of these guys to make him that much more prepared to keep the belt BKFC. I ain't never heard of that, Jim, to be honest. I'm not worried about them, man. I think, I think Palomino is light work. I am the pound for pound right now. Today, I am. Yes, I am. I wasn't the first one to start saying this. You know, people start saying this around me, fighters, friends, fans, you know, great boxers, and, and people just kept throwing it and throwing it and throwing it, and I'm like, you know what, I believe what you're saying because I really do see myself like that. So it wasn't me that said it out first. It was just being said so much to me that I was like, you know what, yeah, that sounds right, I am. Do you believe that? Man, hell no. Hell no, I don't believe that. I mean, what has he done to, to show the world he's the best pound for pound? I mean, Dat Wynn was a 35er. Tyler Goodjohn was a 45er. Jim Miles was a jujitsu player. I'm not none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? This shit different. This is gonna be the hardest fight he ever got. Has he ever faced anybody who hit hard as me? No. Has he ever faced somebody bigger than me? No. You know what I'm saying? Like, like he ain't faced nobody with the head movement, the footwork, or any of that shit that I got. I beat Palomino ass, man. Going into this fight now with Martin, he seems very respectful, very chill. Uh, he did say something about, he, he wanted to talk a little more when I showed up in his fight and I was in the ring, but he wasn't very happy with his performance. And to be very honest, I wasn't very impressed with his performance either. You know what I mean? I'm sorry, buddy, sorry. And then, you know, he tried to throw, you know, he tagged me, he tagged me in a little post there, right? Where he has a school bus. <laughs> and he has, it's pretty, it's pretty funny, right? But he has three guys, like, sticking their head out of the window, right? And, and it's the three guys that he beat to get to me, I guess, right? And he's like, oh yeah, I'm taking this, taking the kiddos to school. Next stop, Luis Baboon. I'm like, Mark, brother, chill. Chill out, chill out, chill out, chill out, man. You know, you know, the only one that's gonna go to school over here is you. You know, he, you're not a better boxer than me, I'm sorry. You know, the last two guys that I fought said they were better boxers than me. You're definitely not a better boxer than me. You got a good reach, a good right hand, that about it. This is a world title eliminator, 155 pounds. To the winner goes a title shot versus Palomino in 2022, round number one. No matter how good of a performance that everybody else seen, that shit is light work to what I'm capable of doing. So, um, and I just, a lot of times, you know, I had, you know, my brother had passed, so I had a whole bunch of shit going on at that, at the same time. Like that, that last fight, I was just focusing on representing my brother, you know, doing this for my brother. Man, this fight, I ain't, I ain't none of that shit on my mind, man. I just can't, I, I can't, it's like I can't put my hands on him fast enough. He's a gem rat. He's a gem rat. Uh, he's really studious. Uh, he studies a lot of tapes. And honestly, a lot of people think his greatest attribute is his eyes and his power. Uh, but it's honestly his mind. And when guys get in there, they realize that. When you sit back and you dissect the fight, right? And 
you see that when he was fighting uh, Isaac Valley Flags, you see that when he was fighting Elvin Brito, you see his ability to come forward, you see his ability to stalk and put punches together. Then when he fighting Good John, uh, and that win, you see his ability to move, stick and move and be on the outside. And I'm like, that's, that's impressive. I have access to the greatest boxers in the world. Like, I, I, there's never going to be a style that I can't find. So I, I don't worry about this dude. I worry more about what I'm about to eat tomorrow. That style that he has, I've always disliked, you know, personally, in a, in a boxing sense, you know, not, not to put him down or anything like that. It's just I always dislike that type of style, that Mayweather style. I don't think that's a very effective style for bare knuckle, you know, this, this shoulder roll to the right hand attacks. I just, I really do not think that that's a good style that translate into bare knuckle. I think it kind of works for him in, in the sense where he has the longer reach on most people he's fought, right? So the reach kind of helps him, but I'm very good with distancing. I can get inside, I can get outside with, before you even touch me. I'm head hunting. I want to knock somebody out. He ain't want to go for the KO against Good John, and he ain't want to go for the KO against that. You see the level of opposition going up, you know? So like, as they get better, knocking people out get harder. If he runs his ass over there and try to go ahead and get a quick finish, you might as well throw my check over the, over the, ring, over the ropes. I swear to God, man, I, I promise you, man, they gonna need to have a hacky sack outside to catch his head when I knock it clean the fuck off of his shoulders. Run his ass over here talking about jumping on me. Yeah, I wish he would. And I need a knockout for myself and for my fans, you know, because I'm, I'm feeding for it. It's like, I haven't had my fix, man, you know? You know, I haven't had a knockout in, in my last, how many fights already? Two? No, it's too, too many, man, too many. I became 100% just about two weeks ago. And I'm not even exaggerating or lying. He had to say that he wasn't 100% because he was in there with a 35er. And that 35er jumped on him. You know, he, he, he got to say something to save face. Like, oh man, like you, you got some explaining to do when you let a little man be the bigger bull. So of course he was going to say that, uh, that he was sick or he wasn't 100%. I literally left the hospital bed to go and push myself to train. You couldn't beat me in my worst. Don't even ask me for any rematch and, and crap like that. Unless you have a belt, I want to take from you. After the fight, I started losing massive amounts of hair. I'm talking about like scary. Like two handfuls of hair, two to three times a day. It was scary. Now, since like last week, like I feel like my strength, my energy, my, my natural strength and energy. And of course the hair loss has stopped. The drops that gave me worked. So thank God we have, the, we have nice hair still. <laughs> Nobody want to hear that shit. He better be 100% when he get in there with me. Because one mistake, one mistake, I'm going to knock his little ass out. <laughs>